Good morning. Um, I'm going to go a little bit deeper today, but I'm going to try to make it very simple. This is what we do here is take something very complex and try to make it very simple. And sometimes there's uh, the factor of why do you need to know? There's so many questions we don't have. The Bible is not, I guess, what you would call all-inclusive. There's mysteries in there. We don't have all the answers, but we seem to want all the answers. And if we don't have the exact answer, we won't use it right. We won't deal with it right. And I'll tell you one of the worst things we do is we want to blame everybody. If, if we blame somebody, it's not our fault. So if somebody says something to you, and oh, I get this all the time, um, you want to blame somebody else or something, then it doesn't make it my fault. And we, we even go far enough that um, if, if somebody has a problem, if we call it a disease, then it's not their fault. It's, it's a disease, and then we can blame God. He made me this way. Don't we do this? We, we want to blame somebody. So we're either going to blame uh, uh, Satan, right, or we're going to blame God. And what I want to kind of do today is put God on trial. Jesus is really the defendant, and the prosecutor is Satan. And don't, don't we do this? Hasn't everybody in here kind of put, trial, put God on trial? Why did he do that? Why would he do that? And for the next few weeks, I want to try to dive into some of this stuff and see if I can't simplify it a little bit for you, or at least give you something to think about or a response to somebody as well. But we always want to blame everybody, and it starts right, right in the beginning of the Bible. I'm just going to read a couple of these things for you. Um, well, let, let's start out when um, the Lord accuses Eve, he, right? Uh, then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this thing you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. She's going to blame the serpent wasn't her fault. She was deceived. Don't we do this? We want to blame somebody else. Then he actually goes on to the next line to blame Adam or to rebuke Adam. He says, um, and the man said, the woman who you put here with me, <laughs> right? There's a blame right there. You put her with me. She gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. So the woman is going to blame the serpent. Adam's going to blame the woman. And really, I think Adam here is actually blaming God a little bit. The woman that you put with me, it's your fault. We don't want to take uh, responsibility for our mistakes or things that we've done wrong. So what we do is we try to find something. Of course, we got Google now. And if you Google enough stuff, you'll find the answer you're looking for whether it's right or wrong, and then you can defend yourself. You're going to blame something. I, I do this with Kelly, too. She'll say, uh, you know, you didn't tell me that. And I'll get my phone out and start going through my texts. And so, mm, you're right. Maybe it was Messenger. Oh, it's Snapchat. I know it's here somewhere. Because I can't be wrong. Anybody else like that? We want to blame somebody. And why do we always want to blame God or Satan when maybe it's just your fault? And actually, this is Christianity, to confess your sins. And nobody wants to do this. I, I was sitting with some pe people one day. I, I just love this. This is, this is the type of people we roll with. Uh, we're just sitting there having a con conversation. And this person throws up her arms and said, I just want to say, I, you can fill in the blank. And I'm like, I don't care. Just wanted to get that off her chest, I guess. Oh, did I say her? Okay. Uh, thank you. You don't need to tell me. What do you do you don't want anybody to know about? And if you're caught, you're going to blame somebody else. You're going to find something, someone or something to blame it on. Because it is not your fault. It started right from creation. So, the big question here, who created evil? Where did evil start? Really, we don't know. I'll just give you the answer right now. It doesn't tell us. But I'm going to actually go through some stuff here. Okay, first of all, is evil something that you would create? Is evil a thing? Is evil something that was created? So let's, let's start in the beginning where God created 
and he saw that it was dark, so he created light. Did he create the darkness, or was it just there? Is darkness actually something that you create, or is it simply a lack of light? Is cold actually a thing, or is it the lack of heat? So is evil a thing, or is it the lack of goodness? Well, if it's the lack of goodness, where'd that start? Boy, here we go. I'm going to blame somebody, because it couldn't be you. Couldn't be me. Oh, no. This has gone on forever. It's not my fault. So it all started with the fruit. Sin enters the world. And we have to live with it. And I want to try to explain in a simple way how I feel this happened. We don't know. We don't have all the answers. But I'm going to try to tell you in a way that I think. This is completely my opinion. And if you disagree with me, tell Kelly. And <laughs> we'll deal with that later. Um, first of all, let's go back to creation. And God actually creates heavens. Plural. So he's creating the heavens and the earth. And there's actually three heavens described. And here we go again. We're going to talk about whether is the first heaven just the atmosphere or is the first heaven actually go up to when there's uh, no oxygen. Where, where is that boundary where we step into the next heaven? I don't know. But there are three heavens. And I'm going to rattle off some things here that will show you that heavens are plural. To the Lord your God belongs the heavens, even the highest heaven. The earth and everything in it. Even the highest heaven. Where's that? In this highest heaven, right? We've been taught that there's nothing bad there. It's absolutely, th this, is, this is the ultimate new Jerusalem. This is where there's no more tears and no more sadness, no more fear. This is the ultimate place with no evil whatsoever. So what are the other heavens? Let's look at the next one. Uh, I got this one from Deuteronomy. Uh, to the Lord your God belongs the heavens. Uh, 1 Kings says, But will God really dwell in the earth? The heavens, even the highest heavens, cannot contain him. Even the heavens, the highest heavens. This is plural, all through scripture. But we usually just talk about one. Paul writes in uh, the second letter of Corinthians, he says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up in the third heaven. We know there's multiple heavens. What are they? Where are they? What's in them? How do you get from one to another? And where does evil stop? Nothing evil. I'm sorry, this is actually in uh, Revelations 21. Nothing evil will be allowed to enter, nor anyone who practices shameful idolatry and dishonesty, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We know there's multiple heavens, and we know that in the ultimate third heaven, there is nothing bad. Easy stuff, right? You've all read this probably. These kind of things I probably don't need to teach you. Here's, here's one I want you to think about. I'm actually going to put this up on the screen. screen. This is uh, Job 38, 4 through 7. Now, Job is going through a lot of things. Um, this is something we wouldn't wish on anybody. And he's trying to figure out, his friends come along and are trying to figure out what he did wrong. And he's kind of trying to uh, defend himself and stuff like this. And this is God speaking to him. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you know so much. Job thought he had it all figured out. Who determined its dimensions and stretched out the surveying line? This is the New Living's translation because it's easier for us to read. What supports its foundations? And who laid its cornerstone as the morning stars sang together? And all the angels shouted for joy. 
right here, you have to understand that the morning angels, the morning stars and the angels were already there before the creation, before earth. Okay, follow along with me, right? Doesn't that say that? Is it still up on the screen? Yeah. It says that they were there. The morning stars sang together. Do you know there's two morning stars? It's plural because there's two morning stars in the Bible. And how could this possibly be? One's Satan and one's Jesus. How could this possibly be? I'm going to also, we're going to put up Isaiah 14, 12. And I'm going to show you how this works. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to earth. That morning star right there is Satan. But in 2 Peter... Jesus is called the bright morning star. These two were already in heaven when God is creating the earth. Where were you when we laid the foundation of the earth? The morning stars were singing together with the angels. So if Satan, Lucifer he was actually called at the time, if he was already created before the earth in in does Isaiah talk about throwing him out, throwing him down before the earth was finished being created? We don't know this, do we? When did he throw him down? We know that he was there when Eve and Adam were there. But was he there before? Was he there after? Does it matter to you? This is where evil starts. Is Satan thinks that he is going to raise himself above God. And they will worship him in the exact same way, if not even more. And he takes a third of the angels with him. Demons, they're called. The legion. I want you to think about whether evil had existed yet. Obviously it did when they threw him to the earth. I'm going to try to paint a picture of how I, I see this. How I can understand this. I think I understand this. And it would be the best way that I could ever tell anybody. God creates heavens and the earth. So let's say he makes this big, uh, transparent dome. And, and the, the dome is a, a transparent, real thin material of some sort. Maybe like a balloon or something. And this, he, this is going to be earth right here. And he takes Satan and his demons and angels and throws them down. Would they be outside that dome that he created? Because Adam and Eve lived in uh, the Garden of Eden, which would have been paradise. It would have been perfect. There was no evil there. So there had to be something that divided them. I'm going to call it a dome. He throws Satan out of heaven, down to earth. But he's created this dome over the goodness that he has created. And Eve poked a hole in it. Let's say so, uh, something that you could understand. Uh, COVID's a big deal this, this, these days. Let's say outside the dome, instead of evil, it was COVID. The coronavirus was all everywhere outside of this dome that God created for us to live in this beautiful, peaceful place together. And as soon as somebody poked a hole in it, it came in. And boy, it's, it's hard to get rid of, right? Now, now it's in with us. This is a tiny hole. And now it's in with us. Oh, what's going on? Bad things are people are sick and everything. So, so what well, you want God to patch the hole, right? You don't want any evil. Why doesn't God just come down and just, just wipe out all the evil? So let's say he patches that hole and disinfects the dome. You're back to normal again until somebody else pokes a hole in it and you start all over again. What, what Satan does in my mind is he puts things on the dome, a stack of money, um, lustful desires, um, pleasure, greed, power, control. These things are like, you know, on this transparent thing we can't see. And when we go to grab them, it pokes a hole in it. 
as soon as you reach for it, as soon as the temptation gets you to where you reach for it, you see, Eve just reached for something and it broke a hole. And now it exists. Okay, so now we, now we got two domes, right? We got a dome that he created for us that was supposed to be beautiful. And then and Satan's on the outside of that putting bait all over this dome so that we will actually rip a hole in it, you know. Can, can you understand this so far? And he says, you know what? I'm going to create another dome. And this dome right here, Satan cannot get through. That's the only one he cannot get through because we keep poking holes in the one that's between us and him. And Jesus comes along. Jesus comes along and says, you know what? If you follow me, if you do my will, if you follow my commands, I will put a dome over you. You can each have your own little domes within the big dome that's supposed to be paradise. And I will make that dome stronger and stronger and stronger. But if you poke a hole in it, it's inside your dome. The virus is in. The evil is in. And we keep saying, why don't you come to earth and wipe all this out? Uh, patch all the holes and disinfect our domes. And let, let's just start over again. How long would you last? Would you be the next one to poke a hole in it? It's got bait all over. Everything you ever wanted is hanging there. And when you reach it, it is so transparent and thin, you break a hole in the dome and the virus and the evil comes in and it starts all over again. But with Jesus, you can have your little dome over your little family, your little household, and as long as you don't bring it in, your dome is stronger. With Jesus, he's got this, this transparent rubber. Let's say it's rubber. Let's say it's, it's even harder than that. What, what is a Kevlon? Fiber, fiber, what is it called? Carbon, fiber carbon. This is some of the strongest stuff in the world. But it can still be broken and you can still bring it in with you. If you go out of your dome and hang out out there too long, you're going to bring it back into your dome. Now, you can sanitize your dome a lot easier than you can where we all are populated. You have the right to sanitize your dome each and every day if you want. And you can go back out and you see this evil won't really bother you because even if you do bring it back in, you can sanitize it through the Holy Spirit and live fine. Where does evil live? How did it start? Where is it now? How can we get rid of it? Whose fault is this? Did God create evil? Did God put a barrier between us and evil and we poked a hole in it? And I say this once in a while. Okay, let's ask God to come back, wipe out all the evil, all the sin in the world. Everything is going to be just like heaven on earth. Perfect. I'll bet somebody poked a hole in it already. That's how we can't really get rid of this. We just, we just have to kind of learn to live with it. And doesn't that sound just terrible? How, why would a God do that? Why would God allow this? That's probably what we'll talk about next week. But, you know, can you at least keep the virus out of your own personal dome? Away from your children? Away from your family? You can each and every day, you can disinfect your dome and it won't get through the barrier that Jesus has over you and your family. This barrier cannot be broken by evil, but you can bring it back in. If you go out there, you can bring it back in. And God just keeps trying to patch the hole in the big one. He just is patching and patching and patching and patching and patching. Isn't that what you want? Patch the holes, God. Patch them. Here we go again. He's going to patch them all right now. Somebody probably already poked a hole in it. So, when we poke holes in this dome, maybe we didn't create evil, but are we responsible for it? If Eve 
would have stayed in her dome and not poked a hole in it when the serpent says, well, you can eat from that tree. There still wouldn't be any evil here. And maybe the next generation, Cain and Abel, well, they weren't all good because there was evil in the world, right? What if they had? What if they'd done it all right? Everybody did it right. Till you were born. Now it's your turn. You're going to poke a hole in the dome. Have I got anything to give you? No? I threw you under the bus. Wade, you are responsible for the for the fall of man. Right? We all did it all right till you were born. And you poked a hole in it. That's how evil gets into our lives. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you this other little story. And I probably won't get it all right. Let's say evil on us makes quills and we're a porcupine. You're going to be a porcupine for a while and you're going to live in this dome, <laughs> right? How's that going to work for you? So one time it was a real, real cold winter and animals were dying off because they couldn't protect themselves. And uh, the porcupines decided if they all huddled together, they could stay warm enough to survive. But when they did, it was so uncomfortable, they were poking each other, that they couldn't do it. I cannot get that close to everybody. And they, they moved away and they started to die. And they finally realized that if they could just put up with the quills of others, that they could live, they could have life. And can you understand that if the imperfections of somebody else would disturb you, you can still live with them. You can find a way because it's good. What God created is good. And maybe, maybe when we all get together real close and everybody's little imperfections are just bothering us, you either find a way to live with it or you don't. We're not meant to be alone. We're meant to live in community. And these quills are the imperfections of one another. And I'm sure I have poked a lot of you with my quills. This happens, doesn't it? Somebody pokes you with their quills and you won't ever speak to them again. You don't like them. But if you don't, you'll die. If you don't show them some love, you will die. That's how we're supposed to live together. And we can do this in a world with evil. We can actually keep evil away. But are you responsible for the holes? God created a beautiful thing. And we should have been able to live with Satan. And he, he would have had no power over us. We have the ability to not be deceived. We could have lived together and been immune from evil until we did it. It shouldn't have been a problem. I, I can understand why he would create evil and, and, and throw him down to earth and create people there. And Oh, why would he do that all at the same place? Obviously, it wouldn't live together. We can live together. We can live together in an evil world and still be holy. You just have to work at it a little bit and accept people that have quills that poke you a little bit once in a while. We kept poking holes. Will the worship team get ready? We kept poking holes in the dome that God had made for us to live a beautiful life forever. He had to throw us out of it. And, and the punishment for that was death. The wages of sin are death. We now get old. We are now uh, our bodies give out. This is the punishment for sin. God saw that we were poking holes in it so much that he let Jesus leave his throne and come to the earth to fix it. New plan. You didn't do the dome right. You didn't treat it right. You didn't do what he said. You didn't obey him. And we got a hole in it. So he's going to send Jesus to this earth. And he's going he's gonna to have Jesus create this, this Teflon carbon fiber dome that he's got around some of his people all over the big dome. The big one. 
Jesus is going to take care of everything. We found ways to put a hole through it. Because we wanted those things out there so bad that we found a way to get past the carbon fiber, the Kevlar, Teflon, I don't know what those things are. Can you get a mind picture of how this should be? But we keep poking holes in it and we keep bringing the virus into our own dome. Who created evil? Does it matter? Because he has a plan for it because we failed. He loves us so much that he created a plan for his son to come to this earth, patch all the holes, die for us, forgive us. And we continued to poke holes in the dome. Did you poke any holes in the dome this morning? Are you to blame for the holes in your dome? You sure are. If we all would have just obeyed, there'd be no holes. There would be no evil. And you know, Jesus came and died for you so that you can go beyond the last dome into the third heaven and then live a life that he intended for you to live here. Beautiful, perfect, loving. Even the animals liked each other. Kelly says, when I get to heaven, I'm going to be able to sing beautifully. And I said, I am not so sure. <laughs> but I'll probably like it. It's going to be a great place. And while we're here, we're porcupines and we have to live together. And we can do our best to try to separate it, to try to keep it out of our own dome, to try to keep our neighbors so that they can go outside the ultimate dome at one time where there is no evil. Who created evil? I don't know. I think it's really just a lack of goodness. Did you create any evil today? Yesterday? Are you to blame? Oh, it can't be me. You know, it all started because Eve ate the, he ate the fruit and then Adam took some too. It's all their fault. But he, but he patched the holes and he sanitized the dome. Is it your fault? When did it come? I don't know, but it's here. And now we live with it. We're porcupines and we have to stick together and accept imperfections because that's how he intended it for us to live. I just want you to know that he knows where you're at. He knows what went wrong. He knows how to fix it. He sent his son to this earth, a beautiful plan so that no one would ever perish. And we continue to poke holes in it. It's just, you know what? He'll sanitize it over and over and over every day. He'll make it stronger for you every day. As you follow him, as you grow in your faith, your walk with God, your, your dome gets stronger. And you can sanitize yourself. You can go into other people's homes, other people's domes, and tell them how they can get rid of the virus in their dome, the evil. First thing you have to do is say, I am responsible for the hole in my dome. I did that. That is the first key to bringing yourself down to a notch. Well, you don't blame God. You're really going to put God on trial. You want him to tell you exactly where this came from because it's not your fault, right? Maybe it is your fault. And if it is, it's okay. Because he's sending, he sent his son and continues to send the Holy Spirit to us to rescue us. All you need to do is call out to him. He has a way to fix it. And if it doesn't work and you poke another hole in your dome, he'll fix it again and again and again. But you got to ask him to. So let's say... Jesus shows up and says, you know what? I am going to wipe out evil in your home, in your community. But like Adam and Eve, you have one thing you have to do for me. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. It says must, not a suggestion. All you have to do is love one another or you're going to poke a hole in your dome. 
Adam and Eve blew it. Yes, so did we. They're not at fault. Is God at fault because he did this? Do you think you can actually understand the intelligent plan that God has? Do, do you think you can understand God? Do you think he owes it to you to explain to you every little thing and how this went and what's going to happen and, and how he's going to take care of it? You can't do that. You don't deserve that. Because you're poking holes in your dome. There will come a day when you will know everything. Can you just trust him to live in your dome the best that you can until he takes you to a dome that nothing can break? It's hard sometimes. I know it is. I, I think this whole intelligence thing, I, if somebody put up a great big mathematical question up on the screen and I said, uh, would you explain that to me? Well, I'm sure they'd look at me and say, I don't, I don't know where to start. <laughs> you can't fathom that. I think this is God talking to us. And our, our intelligent level is so less than him that I don't think we could even understand it if he explained it to us in the basics of basic. I, I kind of see it like this dog. You know, this dog right here really can't comprehend what I want. It knows some of the, some of the uh, commands, I guess. Doesn't do them very often. Her, her dome is just full of holes, right? <laughs> Daisy, come here. Come here. Okay, roll over. And roll, roll over. Come here. Come here. Roll, roll over. You, yeah, you want the treat before you'll do it, won't you? You want God to give you a treat before you'll follow his commands. That dog will not do what I want it to do. It doesn't have a clue what I'm asking it to do. It doesn't understand. It doesn't understand why. Sure. That'll make a message. I love you anyway. You understand how God loves us? Just because that dog didn't do what I wanted it to do, it didn't get a reward, but I love her so much. God loved you so much that he would let his child be nailed to a cross for you. I wouldn't do that with my dog. I wouldn't do that with my rabbit. I love you, but you ain't worth it. <laughs> Can you just try not to poke so many holes in your dome? Quit poking holes. Let's pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you for the protection that you give us that we don't even know about it. We are undeserving of it. But we are so glad that you think that we are. God, we were not deserving of the death of your son. But I'm so glad that you think we are. Thank you. For what you've done for us. And I'm going to try my best. To not be tempted by the things that are on the dome. That if I touch. I grab. I even look at long enough. Will poke a hole. God help me to quit poking holes. In Jesus name. Amen.